It is the case that people who go through this exercise report feeling as if they know the other person quite well and feeling certain levels of attachment or even love and desire for the other person that they would not have predicted had they not gone through that process. If you look at the stability of relationships over time, something that's been extensively studied mainly by psychologists, but now also by neurobiologists, what you find is that there are some key features of interactions between individuals that produce predict that a relationship will last. And those are many, but mainly fall under this category of positive delusions. But there are also just a handful of things that predict that a relationship will fail over time. Romantic relationships are essential for a healthy lifestyle. However, most relationships have a short lifespan. Many people think they are not lucky enough to have a long-lasting love life, which is why some of them don't even marry until they turn 30. Stay till the end to learn how to make your relationship last a lifetime. A romantic relationship is typically between two unrelated people. They may have different backgrounds and upbringings. Sometimes the couple may even come from different cultures. So how can you overcome these obstacles and build a relationship with your partner that lasts forever? First of all, communication is crucial for having a strong relationship. Talking to your partner more often regarding your personal matters can help your relationship in the long run. You must be honest about your feelings regarding any issue. Some people tend to hide their feelings due to the fear of losing their partner. It is wrong because over time, the things you hide from your partner build up in your mind, and as those things pile up, they can create resentment towards your partner. Uncontrolled irritation leads to regular criticism, which is the first step toward the end of a healthy relationship. Criticism, of course, does not mean that there's no place for criticism in stable relationships. Of course, there is. It has to do with how frequent and how intensely that criticism is voiced. You are allowed to criticize your partner, but it must be constructive. Your partner is not your child or a servant, so there should be a level of criticism that works. But it should not be too frequent or too intense. If you are open about what you like and dislike, your partner will know when they are out of line. Therefore, they can quickly apologize and make amends, so you won't resent them over time. There are several other things that communication will prevent in your relationship, and one of them is defensiveness. In this case, defensiveness refers to a lack of empathy from your partner. Defensiveness, of course, is defensiveness. Uh, we know as the sort of lack of ability to hear another or to adopt their stance. So lack of empathy, I think, is, is a, a one way to interpret defensiveness. When a partner becomes defensive, they start hiding their feelings, wants, and needs from you. It begins after frequent and intense criticism. They feel they're not good enough for you, which becomes a major source of cracks in a relationship. Once the person feels they're not good enough, the feeling never goes away completely. In such a situation, you can avoid heartbreak by communicating with your partner on every problem. Additionally, you should start making time to do things with your partner. Most of us spend more time at work or with friends than with our partners once the relationship passes the honeymoon phase. Spending time with your partner is necessary for the health of your relationship because it builds a connection between the two of you. It helps in increasing the level of trust in the relationship. In addition, spending time with your partner keeps the passion alive and relieves stress. The more time you spend, the more connected you will be with your partner. When you are connected to someone deeply, it is easy to know when they are troubled. This way, it is easier for your partner to tell you their feelings. It will also help you overcome one of the main problems of relationships, stonewalling. Stonewalling, which is actually another form of lack of empathy. It's a turning off of this neural circuit that's so critical for um, desire, love, and attachment. The stonewalling essentially means uh, the emotional response or the request of another is completely cut off. According to Huberman, stonewalling means you completely ignore whatever your partner is going through and focus on your own needs. Stonewalling is almost like a nuclear bomb in any relationship. Can you imagine being with somebody who completely ignores your physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual state? It is best to prevent the situation from reaching the stonewalling stage. At this point, nothing could be off limits. Anything you think is necessary, from counseling to speaking to a therapist, should be done if you notice the first sign of stonewalling from either of you toward the other. In a relationship, the last nail in the coffin is contempt. According to many therapists, contempt is one of the leading causes of breakup, and in the case of married couples, divorce. Contempt makes you see your partner as worthless and beneath your standard. Often it makes you feel that you deserve better. 
Contempt brings deep-seated hatred towards your partner and creates a scenario where you see them as uninteresting, unimportant, and ultimately beneath you. And contempt, of course, uh, by definition, is the feeling that a person or thing is beneath consideration, worthlessness, or deserving scorn. And apparently they can identify this in the videos of uh, couples having discussions and interacting by um, very elaborate eye rolls, by expressions of anger in one individual when their partner is actually expressing enthusiasm or excitement about something. Something. It's the, uh, oh yeah, you would say that, or, um, or deep-seated resentment toward the other, so much so that it's apparent that one uh, kind of actively dislikes the other partner. Contempt is always brutal for relationships because it takes away any respect towards the other person in the relationship. The best way to prevent this problem is by spending more time with each other. Learn more about each other to understand the other person's views. Do you think criticizing is healthy in a relationship? Let us know in the comments below. If you found this video interesting or helpful, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and press the notification bell so you won't miss any of our future uploads. Until then, take care.